Uh, my name is Arana, like Piranha without the P. I gotta say that. Because like a lot of times people kind of mispronounce it. Also because I did a show and the DJ was like, give it up for Areola. I was like, what? <laughs> that is so rude. My mama is here. You just going to call me a boob in front of everybody. <laughs> yeah. I like telling that joke because I can always tell who the smart people are in the crowd, you know. <laughs> smart people laugh at Areola, you know. Everybody that failed biology laugh at boob. Like, oh, that's what that is. Oh. I know. I thought it was in your throat. Oh, I, I was gonna get dressed up for y'all and then I changed my mind. I was like, I don't even know them, whatever. <laughs> Let me put on some, you know. I don't never know what to wear on stage though because women always like lead you astray. Like women are weird mythical creatures. Like they know how to congratulate you and talk about you at the same time. <laughs> Women real slick. You know, women will be like, oh yeah, girl, go ahead, do your thing. What the hell she got on? What is, she look like an unemployed spy. What does she got on? She look like double O, oh no, what is that? Tell her to take that jacket off while she at it. No, I'm not, you don't have rent money, shut up. It's always somebody who just got in the club with $5 that wanna holler out some stuff. You know. You ain't ballin', be quiet. <laughs> I'm black, if you didn't notice, you know. If you did, congratulations. If you didn't, lay off the Long Islands. But I went to a majority white university, so I learned the secrets about white people and their behavior. I learned little secrets. For instance, I learned the cold word when a white person about to set you up and beat you down, all right? The cold word is no worries. It's equivalent to the black, it's all good. It ain't all good, for real. You just, you better not step on a thug's gym shoes in the club and hear it's all good and stick around. You better run, you know. I was at Santa Monica Pier, I had my little cousin with me, love my cousin David. And uh, he was, he saw the, the, a roller coaster, he got all excited. Oh, I wanna get on a ride, get on a ride. He ran and stepped on his white guy gym shoes, you know. And the guy got so irate, he was like, oh my God, oh my God, you really need to show him some manners. That's unacceptable. I'm like, sir, oh my gosh, you know, he's six years old, he's sorry, you know. <laughs> he was like, I, I mean, I'm just saying, you, you shouldn't just let him get away with that. I'm like, sir, I'll talk to him, I'm sorry. He was like, no worries. I was like, David, David, come on. <laughs> abort, abort, let's go. <laughs> I did not have time for Columbine, we got to go. I'm from Chicago, um, and for that reason, I don't believe in plastic surgery. Sorry, I don't. It just don't sound safe, you know what I mean? Like, it sounds like video game fight moves or something. Like a facelift sound like a Russian uppercut. Facelift! Like, that's how, I, that's how I hear it in my head, you know? It sound like I'm playing Mortal Kombat or something. Facelift! Tommy Top, Botox, finish him! It's some bull, you know? I can't trust that. You know, I really can't trust Botox because that's your face. You can't just mess up your face, you know, without consulting with somebody first, you know. That's the first thing people see. And if you do talk to somebody and it's like one of your female friends or something and she talk you into it, you need to dump her because she don't love you. That's the worst compliment ever. Girl, should I get Botox? Yeah, girl, you need a new face. Yes, you do. Uh-huh, now you walk around looking like the screen mask. How you doing? How you doing? Get you some self-esteem, please. You just spent thousands of dollars to look like a surprise serial killer. Get you some self-esteem. Like, let these girls send you off like that. Anybody ever date somebody ugly on accident? Be real, come on. I mean, ain't nobody here but your family members. They ain't gonna tell nobody. Y'all lying, like y'all. Everybody done had at least one affirmative action relationship. You know what I'm saying? They really weren't cute, but they had a great personality, so you gave them a shot, you know. Somewhere in that, they got some self-esteem, decided they was too good for you and wanted to dump you and stuff, you know. At least that's what happened to me, you know. I blame my friends, it's their fault, you know. It's, it's their fault. You ever break up with somebody and that's the exact moment your friends wait to tell you what they really thought about them, you know. I was on the phone, I'm crying and distracted. Oh my God, girl. I just, he left me. She was like, girl, he was cheating on you. I was like, what? How you, how you know? She's like, girl, he was ugly. He was so black, he looked like a pet leather Easter shoe. 
Every time you hugged him, I thought you had on a leather coat. He was black. You don't love yourself. You could have said something before we spent Christmas over your house. You ain't have to lie. I wasted all of 2007 with him, you know. You could have said something. I believe if my man cheats with an ugly chick, it doesn't really count. You know? <laughs> Ladies, some of y'all may not feel me. I appreciate that support in the corner. And okay, here's my thing, all right? This is what I believe, all right? If she looks like Beyonce, Eva Longoria, you know, somebody cute, I would feel insecure. I would be like, oh God, you know, what does he see in her? Or what kind of tricks does she have up her sleeve, you know? But if she look like Macy Gray, I'm gonna let it slide, because I got things to do, you know? <laughs> I can't be worried about some chick that look like Gargamel, whatever. I wouldn't even believe you was cheating with her. I'd be like, yeah, yeah, bring your behind back at 10.30. I gotta do these dishes. I got time to deal with this madness.